All right, so we're going to show you one more tail option for these. Uh, we showed you a Dahlberg deer hair diver with a rabbit strip tail, which is killer uh, from an action standpoint, but not great from a casting, castability standpoint. But we're going to try some with uh, saddle hackles, uh, ostrich plumes, and marabou and flash to give you like a real buggy look. Easy to cast, tons of movement. This is just, I'll show you how to do that. You can add rubber legs to it. You know, there, there's the endless. So the first step is the weed guard still. We're still doing weed guards. And tie it in across the top of the hook shank. And these weed guards, it pays to hit them with zap a gap to keep them cinched into place. And these flies can be super durable. I think, you know, if you put enough zap-a-gap and time into tying these things, they can definitely hold up to some toothy fish. Zap-a-gap on the weed guard. So I've got some purple saddle hackles. I like purple on these flies. Uh, it's a great color for bass. Uh, for It's a dark color. It works pretty well. And I like having three feathers per side. My preference. So I've got three here. I'm going to tie them in on the back side first. They're kind of flaring out towards me. And you can strip some of this fluff off the back, but I like to keep a little bit of fluff to give them some body. So I stripped off some of the fluff, but not all of it. And I'm going to tie them in just right on the side of the hook shank. I'm going to do three more. Same thing, other side. This side. You want to you need to make sure that the length is about the same. That's the one thing you really want to match up is on both sides of the length. So we're pretty close there. And, and these, these feathers are pretty uniform when they ship. I mean, there's, the length is pretty similar. So, there we have six strung saddle hackles. And I'm going to clip this loose. And the main thing you want to do is keep this front of the hook clean. This is all going to be for spinning your head. Uh, the next thing I like to have is some ostrich plumes. Just motion wiggling. Um, I think these look great hanging off the back of a fly. Be it an intruder. Uh, some folks like uh, Tabery ties these. This is the whole tail. It's just a ton of these. Uh, I think this has more body for a bigger profile, bigger fish. Uh, so I'm going to splay out, you know, a dozen ostrich plumes out the back. Over the top, spread them around. And now you've got even more motion back here. Tons of motion, but almost no weight. Um, so you can top that off with a little bit of... Uh, uh, flashy boo mirage or uh, various other flash item I like this kind of holographic purple here I'm gonna use you know you, you don't want to go too crazy with the flash but you know a few strands here and there I think really accents the fly nicely um, as you can probably see I'm not sure what the camera angle is doing but this is a total mess uh, bass bugs deer hair bugs uh, you can see by what my shirt looks like by what the table looks like uh, kids, ask your parents permission before trying this at home. And then, kind of just the last step before I start spinning deer hair, I want to have a little bit of marabou to kind of transition between the deer hair collar and the, the tail body of the fly. And uh, I just put that over the top, the last kind of item here. Right. So, so you here's your your back end. This is it. This is the finished back end of the fly. Uh, and, and then we're going to start spinning deer hair forward from here. I have some purple uh, deer belly hair. Uh, dyed white deer belly hair. It's dyed purple. Um, and this stuff is just killer for spinning flies. And the first, the first uh, iteration you don't really spin. You're kind of still tying on top of the thread materials. That's just uh, you know cinching in place as a collar. Some kind of it holds the rest of the materials back, it sweeps them back a little bit, and you're gonna just kind of clump it on top. 
and you're gonna just tie in a loose wrap. If it spins a little, that's fine. Wiggle it around a little bit. And I'm tying with 140 denier thread, which is pretty heavy duty thread. And you need that because you don't want your thread to break on these. That would not be good. So I've got a little bit of deer hair clumping it, making it go backwards. And now I'm going to start to spin some hair. And uh, these straggly kind of hairs are going to stay in there, give the fly kind of a buggy, uh, more natural look. And I, I like it to look like that. Packed in the last bit of deer hair here. And this is we're trying to leave a little bit of room for the weed guard to get tied in. And, you know, kind of just working this hair back, working this hair back. And, you know, this is a big fuzzy head. We're going to trim it down to something more manageable here. If I can keep the vise on. As you can see, this is a lot of muscularly intensive tying. You know, I mean, I'm just warping the vise. I'm breaking the table. You know, I'm breaking 140 denier threads. Uh, you know, you're just working this thing because it's going to hold up some really nasty creatures. Finish and then start trimming this sucker right now. And then I'm going to tie in the weed guard at the end. So the first step to trimming is the bottom, which I discussed in a previous video here. We're going to trim the bottom flat with this razor. And that means taking it, lining it up with the eye of the hook, taking it across the bottom. Flatten it out. And it's a fine line between making sure you get as much of this as you possibly can and getting too close to your thread wraps. Move past the bottom here, the bottom is relatively flat. That's what's part of what gives it this diving motion. And now we're going to start on the sides. And I like to work on it in kind of like a pyramid triangle shape. So I start looking at the front and I work small and then flare out to the collar. So I pick three sides. One, two, top, right, left. Make a little box there. And I work out from that tiny little box as best I can. And I'll show you what that box looks like here. So I finished stacking the deer hair on the head, and now I've trimmed it back into the Dahlberg Diver shape. And you can leave kind of as much collar as you feel comfortable leaving. I like leaving a little bit extra collar. It gives it more flotation. It dives. It makes it stiffer. I like it to be kind of stiff. And to further stiffen it, I'm going to hit it with a little Zappa Gap. Jam those kind of fibers in the front all together and make them extra stiff, like a lip. Think of it as like a diving lip on a plug. Diver flange here around the collar. Stiff fibers, aerodynamic head. Boom, boom, boom. That's the motion. And, uh, and now I'm going to reattach the weed guard and wrap this sucker up. So I pulled my weed guard around the back side. I stick it through the eye. You don't have to do it this way. There's other ways you could do it. I want to have just a little bit of play, but you know, doing it through the eye helps me center it up. You, know, you don't want this thing off to the side. It just you know, looks bad. It probably is about as effective, but I like the look of it centered up nice. With some thread wraps. Try not to stick to your nice collar. Now that I've got this all the way through, I'm gonna feed the thread this back out so it doesn't jam up the eye too bad. I guess you can do it one or two ways, but this would be one one way to do it. All right. Trim that off as close as you feel comfortable, and you can leave some tag kind of in front of the eye. It won't be too hard to get a thread in there. Make sure it looks pretty reasonably lined up. And then you whip finish and you're done. This is a finished lighter weight Dahlberg Diver. You could add rubber legs to this section back here. Um, anything that's going to give it a lot of motion. So uh, there it is.